The function that we need to help us with this problem is the if-else function. If-else is one of the built-in functions, so you don't need to import uh, any packages in order to use it. Its behavior is rather simple, but its use can be sort of complicated. So let's talk a little bit about exactly how it works. Fundamentally, the if-else function evaluates some condition as a Boolean. So some condition is either true or false. If that condition is true, it returns one value. If that condition is false, it returns some different value. And it's your choice what those two values are. Typically, the way that we uh, get this Boolean is by evaluating some particular condition. So usually we pass in some argument in the form of a vector. And then we evaluate that vector by finding out, is it equal to something? Is it greater than something or whatever? And that's how we end up getting the true or false values in the Boolean that we use to evaluate this condition. So in this specific example, we have a variable called h1pf1. And the condition that we're checking is whether that variable is equal to one or not. So we pass in the vector h1pf1. Then for each value, we check whether it's equal to 1. If that value is equal to 1, if that condition is true, then we assign it a value of 1. If it is not equal to 1, then we ass assign it a value of 0. So in this case, uh, if the value is 1, we don't really do anything to it. We leave it the same. But in all other conditions, that's where the else part comes in. We assign its value equal to zero. And keep in mind that this is a vectorized function, which means that um, this condition is being evaluated for each item in the vector. The first item is evaluated, then the second item, then the third item, and so forth. So when we pass in an entire vector of numbers, it will evaluate an entire vector of Booleans and produce an entire vector of output values that will be a combination of either ones or zeros, depending on which of these conditions is tr uh, true, whether the condition is true or false for each individual item in the vector. So the format of the function looks like this. Here's the function name. And then the first uh, argument in the function is the condition that we want to evaluate, which evaluates as a Boolean, true or false. And then the second argument is the value it should have if it's true. And the third argument is a value that it should have if it's false. Uh, there are not just one possible Boolean condition that we can check for. There are actually a lot of different Boolean operators. We won't play around with all of these, but I encourage you to try them out. Um, we can st stick an exclamation mark in front of uh, a Boolean condition, and that will basically give us the not of that function. We've actually seen this before when we did, we've actually seen this before when we checked whether uh, a vector had values that were not NAs. So here we see that here. Um, so here would be checking if things were not equal to one. Here is if things are not NAs. We can also combine two conditions. So for instance, we can set up the condition that both H1PF3 have to be equal to one and also the value of H1PF4 has to be equal to one. So this will not evaluate as true unless both of these values are equal to one. We can also do even more complicated things, like we can say if either H1PF2 is an NA or if H1PF3 is an NA. So this is actually evaluating three conditions. First is H1PF2 an NA, the second is H1PF3 an NA, and then for then the third thing is whether one or the other of them evaluates as true. So um, we can mix and match these various Boolean operators to check for rather complicated situations. 
in our uh, Boolean that we generate for the if-else function.